Okay, I wanted to do an update on the fillet lace as well as the trim ones because they there were problems with both of them uh, that I resolved afterwards and so I wanted to give you an update as to what the problems were and how to fix them. This this was the first fillet lace that I did and as if I'm not sure if you can see it clearly but there are places where the edge um, the edge came off. That's because the stitches did not meet these stitches did not meet here or I left a gap. In most of these places it was because I left a gap that I later went back and fixed. But the main problem that I had with this was not that because that's easy to fix. You can even fix that now I can with a with a satin stitch especially since these areas are going to be sewn to the other one, to another one, um, that's going to get fixed. But the problem that I made, the major problem I had with this was that, was distortion. And the ones in the middle came out very nicely, but as you work toward the edge because of distortion, you find that the stitches are not matching. This lace was made by doing four, by going over each block four times so that there's four threads to make up each block. That makes it thick enough to be lace. If you just did one thread, it would be like a spider's web. It would be too thin. So each of those four threads has to be exactly the same. They have to be one right on top of the other so that the stitches that go across them will also be on top of it and go into the block instead of into something else. And the more you move away from the center, for example, like here at the edge, they're not matching up. They're one laying one right next to the other. And here at the top, they're filling in almost the whole space because they're not matching up. So I looked at that and I thought, well, how can you fix that? Um, because what I, what the way that it sewed was, it sewed the, the white background once, then twice, then third time, then the fourth time. Alright, so I realized that by the time I went to the fourth time, it was very distorted. But if I, I sewed each, since this has to be one line, if I sewed this line, and then back, and then again, and then back, so that all four of them were sewn at the same time, one right after the other, there would be no distortion, or very little, if any. And then it moved on, would move on to the next row, and the next row, and the next row. So that by the time I got all the way to the other side, each line would be sewn straight. Each line, all the stitches would be on top of each other. And the same going from the bottom to the top. By the time I got up here, even still, each sew line would be on top of it. Um, because it would be matching the first one. It, because it would sew once and the second line would match right on top of that because it's sewing right after it. Distortion comes when you give it a chance to sew somewhere else and then you come back to it. Alright, so this one I sewed doing it that way. This is still wet because I just dissolved the background because you couldn't really see it with the camera without that. Um, there's still a few places where I have to fix the edge, but generally this turned out really well and there is no distortion here at the top. And there is no distortion at, at the sides. Everything is sewn, I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can see right straight through it. It looks, it's like nice net lace as opposed to this one. If you can see the top here how, how... I want to say ratty, but it's not really ratty. It can be used, but it's not nice. It's not, it's not good. All right, so that, that showed me the best way to deal with something like this, um, that I need to sew each thing one right after the other if I want to, just want to avoid distortion. So I took that same concept and I applied it let me see if I can find to the trim. Now I was doing this trim 
and uh, these trims were not lining up well. By the time I would get to the bottom, it would be very far off. Um, it's running off the sides. I did... Uh, all right. So I didn't even bother sewing all of this one because already when I was here, I was seeing the same problem. Things were not matching up. And so I, I looked at it and I thought, well, the problem again is the dist whole distortion thing. And so I decided to apply the principle that I used with this. And the results were very good. This is, this is the, this is the one that I just did. Now the way this works, and if you look at it carefully, you'll see how, this is one layer of water soluble stabilizer. With these I use two, but I realize I don't really need to use two because it doesn't matter how distorted the fabric, the back, the stabilizer in the background gets. And if you look at it closely, you can see it's very um, warped. This was the first strip that got sewn. And if you look at it now, it's got nice, um, I want to say not ruffles in it. This was the second one that was sewn. And again, it's got a little bit, but not as much as this one. Um, then I sewed this one, which is pretty flat, and then this one, and then this one. Each one of them lines up nicely. Each one of them has very little to no distortion. There was some distortion at the bottom of this one, which I then fixed before I sewed the next one, and there was almost no distortion on the others. So, why does this work? Well, because what I did was, normally with this design, it would sew all of one color, which in this case would be all of the, the circles for all, all six rows. There are six rows here. And then it would do all the white, and then it would do all the gold, and then it would do go back and do the, the red again at the edges which I didn't want to sew, which I wanted to sew separately. So what it's sewing, the way it's sewing now is it sews all six colors on this one strip. Then it goes and does all six colors. For, so in other words, I'm sewing each strip separately, which means I'm going to have to change colors instead of seven times, I'm going to have to change colors 42 times to do this whole piece. But it's worth it to have everything looking the way it should look instead of the ratty mess that the the other one was. So I've so and and it doesn't matter how much the background puckers or how warped these get because they're done. The one that I'm going to sew now is this one. These are all finished. So it can it can it can pucker the background here some more and distort these and pull them out of shape. They're already done. I won't have to go back and sew anything more on top of them. So it doesn't matter how distorted it gets. And by sewing each one separately, I'm minimizing the amount of distortion. Now, normally you don't have this kind of problem. Normally you're not going to be sewing six pieces of trim like this, but again, because I have to match the trim for this particular vest, old vestment, and rather than do, um, put one of these in the hoop, and then change the hoop and put another one in the hoop, um, I'm doing all of them in the hoop, but I'm, it's as if I'm changing the hoop, that I'm re-hooping after each one, because after each one I come back and I, I put the guidelines down for the next one. Um, and that way I know that it's going to sew where it's supposed to. So here's the, what the guidelines look like. It has one line for the edge. This, this, line, this line is right up on it. And what I do is when I put that down, I put it at the edge and make sure that I'm putting it in the right space. This is where, the fir where these red lines are going to go. But it's, it first sews a gold line down to base to base the ribbon to the stabilizer. So 
but I want to know, but what I'm looking at is to see are these exactly the same distance in from the edge? If they are, then I know that I'm where I'm supposed to be with the edge line. So, and I put, I put pins put pins at the top and then I put one at the bottom but I also put pins in the middle because when it's going when it sews that basting stitch down it this rib this ribbon can still twist still move a little bit but these will keep it in place and as I get to this get next to this or up to this pin I'll pull it and when I get up to this pin I'll pull it the bottom and the top ones are outside the sewing range so they don't need to be pulled, but I will probably, uh, I, and I will pull this one later, um, probably back it up a little bit more because the point of it is in the sewing area, but I will pull it because if you don't, sometimes it twists like this one did. If you don't keep a pin there to keep it straight, it kind of does twist. The problem with these also was that the basting stitches that I put down, I stopped short. I stopped here instead of running it all the way to the bottom. Why, I don't know. But I went back later. So you can see there's no basting stitches there. But there is on this one and on this one. That's because I saw the need for it and went back and changed it. Which is a nice thing. You can take it off and fix it and then put it right back on and continue sewing. But these... these this trim looks nice now, where it didn't before. So, um, and that's, yes, it's more work, but again, this is a one-time project sort of thing, and I need, I, want, I need like 11 yards of this. So I'm gonna do, this is three yards of each of these, and three yards of each of these. Um, I need 11 of this and 11, I don't think I need quite 11 of this. Um, more like seven but if I do three I'll have plenty uh, this I may have to do a little bit more but again this would because this is a special project you don't usually end up having to do something like this but now that I know uh, if I ever do want to sew on ribbon for whatever reason uh, I know how to I, I know how it works and I'm passing it along to you so you know how it works you need, in order to avoid the distortion, you need to sew the whole piece and then move on to the next piece. And um, so I've, each of these was done separately. This one, then this one, then this one, then this. Notice I worked out from the middle. Um, and this is the last one. And then what I'll do is I'll hoop some more of the stabilizer and continue from there down, just lining it up again with the top. This will be up here at the top and line it up straight. And because of the guidelines, that won't be a problem, lining it up straight. So I wanted just to give you an update on how how I dealt with these problems. Because again, if you're digitizing, you'd come across problems like this. And um, it's good to learn how to deal with things like that. Uh, every every project is its own, it has its own quirks and sometimes when you're you're do, dealing with something that you've uh, especially for example like trying to fix an old vestment you have you have things there that um, they don't make anymore you have to replicate uh, how are you going to do that so you have to figure it out so that's um, I hope that helps you if you're having that kind of problem with with any lace that you made or with anything else that is causing you a lot of distortion problems. Um, I have to do this, as same with the net lace, on the water-soluble stabilizer. And two layers of it, which is what I used on these, wasn't really doing it. And I did try it with two layers. This one has two layers. Yeah. And it, it, but now I'm using only one layer and it's still coming out nice. So that saves, that saves a lot of stabilizer. And again, 
stabilizer is expensive, save it where you can. But it's really, in this case, um, the fixing of the problem was just doing each one separately. I'm going to, I'm going to do the next part of this trim. And I've cut it, I've cut it off the stabilizer. I cut it off the stabilizer. I don't, even though it's water soluble, I don't use water. First of all, it's, it'll make it stiff. It'll be, and it'll also discolor it. It'll take quite a few soakings to get it back to normal. And that's just a, a lot, of, a lot of work and fuss that you don't need. I do that with the fillet lace. I would have to do that because it's throughout the whole piece. But here. I can trim it off at the edges, and if there's any stabilizer sticking out, I can just hit it with a wet, wet washcloth and just dissolve it that way. Um, but the stabilizer is actually only attached between this red line and this red line, so I can get under the edge and trim it back. Uh, so I've put new stabilizer in the hoop. And this is actually the top is here. This is the top. This and I've sewn the fur the guidelines for the first strip. And again, I'm only doing them one strip at a time. And it won't matter which of these strips I use, uh, but I'll be at putting them down one at a time. So this one is done. This is where the the the, the sewing ends or begins. So I want the red. I want this red uh, circle to be right the edge of that, to be right at the edge of this sew line. I don't know if I, you can see it in the camera or not. Am I, am I off the... Um, and this, this line here, this side has two. The first one, on the furthest one down, that's the edge of the, the ribbon. And the other two are, the other two are where if I fold this back, that's where the red line is going to be. So I want it to be the same distance in on both sides. So I'm going to put this circle down at the edge of this. Hold this tape back. Put it down at the edge of that line. And then I want to line this edge up with this edge. And then I want to make sure that the sew line, the red sew line, this, these red lines are where these lines are. Now I, I did this in gold thread because that happened to be with the, th the thread that was in the machine. It could have been any color thread because it won't show. They're just, it's only in the stabilizer. So now I'm going to put a pin up here to hold this. And I'm going to put a pin down here outside the sew area to hold the bottom and this is best done running it off the edge of the table uh, so that I don't pucker the stabilizer and then I'm going to put I'm going to put a couple of pins in here just to make sure this stays on the edge because again as it's sewing it can shift this and it has done that so I'll put about two or three pins in there and I, I'll put them so that I can pull them out so I want this right at the edge and I'll put one here Again, running it off the table is easier. It's just does less less chance of distorting the the water soluble stabilizer. Okay, there. And another one right here. And now I will sew this strip. And then when it's finished, I'll come back and do sew the guidelines and do the next strip. And then the next strip and then the next strip and then the next strip until they're all done. So these are all lined up. 
they should be. If the ribbon isn't lying straight at the bottom, something is crooked here. If it has a twist in it here, then you're somewhere along here, it's not straight. But this looks good. All right, so I'll sew this and come back and show you what it looks like. And that's how, that's how I would continue connecting it. Could you do this with a regular hoop? I mean, I'm using a magna hoop, which is nice because, again, I have this nice area at the top and the bottom, and it's so flat, I can, you know, extend stuff out over the edge of the hoop. Uh, if I used a normal hoop, would I be able to do this? Yes, but you, st you would have to leave some area at the top and the bottom so you can put this in here. You don't want your, the edge of your hoop coming right here. You want to be able to see the connection. So you want the edge of your hoop coming more like this. And um, the same with the bottom. You want to be able to find the end of it so you can pin it in place. Um, the sticky, sulky, no. Fra uh, the Fabrioni wet and stick might work all right, but again, you because you're doing each individual one, there's no point to that. That's a really expensive stabilizer, and here the background is going to get messed up anyway. It's going to distort. It's going to pucker. Uh, but it, because I am doing each one individually, that's not going to be a problem. Uh, the the Fabioni wet and stick is a a bit thicker uh, because of the the back backing on it, and which makes it wet and stick. Um, so it's so when it puckers, it's going to really pucker. This is very this is very thin, and. It, it will kind of ignore those puckers and sew over them. Uh, so, and that's why I'm also not using two layers of this. First of all, I don't need two layers because it's going to distort anyway. It's going to pucker. It's going to ripple. Um, but again, it's less, less rippling, less, less, um, less in there to cause problems. This is thin enough, this is nice and thin, so if it does ripple, it'll sew right over it nicely without making huge uh, waves in it. All right, so I'll sew this and I'll show you the, the end result. And then that's, then you just go from there, do, adding each one on and continuing down the line, the next section, the next section, the next section, um, each, each set at a t once at, one at a time. Uh, okay, so I've sewn I've sewn the next section, the first the first piece, and you can see how it just continues right along. This is where the first one stopped and the new one began. Um, and I'll just continue doing that all the way down the line. I also sewed the guidelines for the next one, which will be one of these little ones. And I'll do the same thing. I'll just line this up with the, the line here and put this down. Now, it didn't finish the guideline here for some reason. I have to go again. Sometimes it, when you save, when you make a change to it, it sometimes loses something else. And I don't know why it does that, but I'm living with it until I find another software that like maybe someday I'll be able to afford the uh, Fabrioni's but for now I'll, I'll live with what I got so anyway this is where the next one would go uh, and I would just pin it down um, with this one I left the pins in the middle and let it sew the sides and then took the pins out um, I could probably do that with this one uh, it's as long as you pin it this way the bottom one though I think I would pin across last time I pinned it this way and there really wasn't enough room there for it and I had to take it out and it it also didn't sew the guide 
line, they hadn't sewed the guidelines all the way down there. So that's another thing. I have to check on these guidelines and make sure they're all going to the bottom. I've gone in and changed this a number of times. Um, it's just changing tiny little things that like this. And every time you do, sometimes you lose something else. Sooner or later, it'll all be there. But anyway, that's how, the way it works. And you can see that it's, it's done a nice job. And again, it's, there is puckering. Um, but it won't matter. It won't affect this one. Because this one will all be done one thing right after the other. Um, there, may, there may be some small amount of distortion. Again, probably at the bottom. But very small. Very small. I didn't find any at all on this one. Um, so, it, it will work, it looks like it'll work fine. Alright, so, um, again, this would just would line up here. And, again, it's easier to do this over the edge of the table. I'm going to put this sideways. There's enough room here at the top to put it the other way, but... And then, again, this is going to meet this line. And I want to make sure that there's... Wherever the guidelines are, that it didn't sew. Um, this guideline goes all the way to the bottom, but it's these guidelines. And I don't know why it left that little piece out there. Um, but you want to make sure that it's you have the same space on this side as on this side. And it doesn't look like it's doing that. So I'm just, so what I need to do is, on this one I need to put it, instead of right at the edge, I need to be actually have the edge on top of it to, to sew in the correct space. Look at this again. Yeah, this is where it goes. This is where it goes. Yes, right, right on. So the, you can't see the line, or you can just barely see the line. And you put it across here. Bent. If it's bent, the machine might not go past it. And that head might be in the way. With these, I may have to pull the pins. You don't have as much space as you do with the wider one. And one down here at the bottom. All right, and so that one's ready to go uh, to to be sewn. And I'll continue doing that with each each section, and uh, till I get. 7 yards, 11 yards, but you see it is sewing really, it's nicely now, uh, 